All right, ready to explore something new? Always. Great. Today, we're doing a deep dive into oxus rules. Uh-oh. Yeah, no, it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, does it? It's not as catchy as, like, omega-3s. No, not quite. Buckle up, because we're going to be breaking down this super complex topic, all based on this awesome oh, article by Herbal Bloom. Absolutely. So we're going to be pulling out the coolest insights, and hopefully you guys can take some action from it. That's right. We'll uncover not just what they are, but how they form their impact on your health and most importantly what you could do about it yeah so no doom and gloom here just you know actionable advice exactly so first things first let's just answer the big question what exactly are oxystosterols well think of it this way cholesterol is like a vital molecule in your body it's like a it's like a building block yeah building block for cells yeah hormones even vitamin d oh wow but when cholesterol gets exposed to oxygen it undergoes this process called oxidation. Mm -hmm. And oxytrols are simply those oxidized forms of cholesterol. So it's like cholesterol's alter ego. Kinda. Yeah. And while cholesterol is essential, right. too much of it can be a problem. Especially? Especially the type known as LDL cholesterol. LDL, the bad cholesterol. Right. High levels of dietary cholesterol okay. can lead to increased oxysterol concentrations in your blood. Uh, oh. Which can actually trigger inflammation in your immune cells. So it's not just about the cholesterol itself. Right. It's about what happens to it in our bodies. Precisely. Mm. And here's where things get even more interesting. Okay, I'm ready. The way you cook your food can directly impact the amount of oxysterols you consume. Wait, really? Yeah. You mean like even if I'm choosing healthy ingredients, mm -hmm. my cooking method could be like totally working against me? Unfortunately, yes. High heat cooking methods like frying or grilling above 200 degrees Celsius can significantly increase oh, wow. the formation of oxysterols. Okay. So, for instance, microwave and grilling methods have been shown to generate more oxysterols compared to other cooking techniques. Okay. And then reheating previously cooked food can also further elevate those levels. So, you're telling me all my leftovers are full of oxysterols? Well, Depends how you reheat them. Okay, fair enough. So, okay, we've got the cholesterol. It oxidizes into these oxystrols. Right. High heat cooking ramps up the process. Mm -hmm. But, like, why should we even care about these oxysterols? What's the big deal? Well, they've been linked to some serious health conditions. Like? We're talking cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's disease, even retinal degeneration. Okay, now you've got my attention. This is serious stuff. How are oxycystrols involved in all these different conditions? Well, remember how we talked about inflammation? Yeah. Oxycystrols are like potent inflammatory agents. Oh, They lovely. can actually contribute to the buildup of plaque in your arteries. Oh, oh. Increasing your risk of heart disease. Okay. And what's even more concerning is that they can cross the blood-brain barrier, which acts as a protective shield for your brain. The blood-brain barrier? That sounds pretty serious. It is. So what happens once these oxycystrols get into the brain. Once they're in there, they can promote inflammation and oxidative stress. Which is? Which are major contributors to neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. Oh no! Yeah, studies have shown that elevated levels of a specific oxysterol called 27-hydroxycholesterol or 27-OHC okay. are directly correlated with cognitive decline and the development of Alzheimer's. So it's not just our hearts at risk, right. it's our brains too. That's right, and the impact doesn't stop there. Oh no, what else? Let's talk about something called atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis. I've heard that term before. Remind me, what is it again? Atherosclerosis is basically the buildup of fats, cholesterol. Oh yeah. And other substances in and on your artery walls. Okay. And this buildup, known as plaque, mm -hmm. can restrict blood flow. Oh yeah. Lead to serious problems like heart attacks and strokes. Yeah, that's not good. So how do oxytestrols fit into all of this? Well, it turns out that certain oxysterols can actually act as biomarkers for atherosclerosis. Biomarkers, you mean they can like signal that something's wrong? Exactly. Oh. By measuring the levels of specific oxysterols in your blood, okay. doctors can get a clue about the presence or progression of atherosclerosis. Interesting. For example, elevated levels of 7-hydroxycholesterol or 7 heis hg are a strong predictor of carotid atherosclerosis, which, is... which refers to the buildup of plaque in the carotid arteries which supply blood to your brain. Wow. So these tiny molecules are like tiny informants giving us insights into our health. That's a great way to put it. It is pretty cool. 
And the intrigue doesn't stop there. No, it does not. Oh, no. Recent research has uncovered a potential link between oxysteroles and autoimmune diseases. Wait, autoimmune diseases too? Okay, tell me more about this connection. Autoimmune diseases occur when your immune system... Right, which normally protects us... Exactly. Stiffly. ...mistakenly attacks your body's own tissues. Oh, no. And guess what? Oxysteroles seem to play a role in modulating those immune responses. So they're like tiny puppet mounters pulling the strings of our immune system. Interesting analogy. Yeah. Essentially, that's the idea. Studies indicated that patients with multiple sclerosis mm -hmm. exhibit disrupted levels of various oxysterols compared to healthy individuals. Wow. And there's evidence suggesting that decreased plasma levels of 24-hydroxycholesterol okay. and 25-hydroxycholesterol might actually be involved in the disease's development. So it's like a whole other level of complexity to these oxysterols. It is. Okay, so this is getting to be a little bit overwhelming. It sounds like oxysterols are involved in so many different health issues. What can we do to fight back against them? Are we doomed to just a life of yeah. bland, steamed vegetables? Not at all. Okay, good. There are actually a lot of things you can do to combat these oxysterols. Okay. And it all starts with your diet. Okay, I'm all ears. Tell me everything. First and foremost, focus on foods that naturally lower cholesterol. Some real heroes in the food world. Okay. Oh, hey. Beta glucans, plant sterols, mm. omega 3 fatty acids, polyphenols, soy protein. Okay. All of these can help interfere with cholesterol absorption and metabolism. Awesome. Potentially reducing your LDL cholesterol levels. So it's like they're blocking the bad stuff. Exactly. Okay. Awesome. Can you give me some specific examples of those? Absolutely. Beta glucans okay. found in oats and barley mm. are fantastic. Yeah, I love oats. Not only do they lower cholesterol, but they also have this incredible ability to modulate your immune response. Wait, really? Yeah. So they're doing double duty. They are. That's awesome. They work by activating macrophages and dendritic cells, which are key players in your immune system's defenses. Okay. Think of macrophages as your body's garbage collectors. Okay. Engulfing and destroying harmful invaders. Right. And dendritic cells as the messengers alerting other immune cells to the threat. Wow. Beta-glucans help these cells function optimally. So that bowl of oatmeal in the morning is doing way more than just keeping me full. You got it. Amazing. And let's not forget about the power of antioxidants. Right. Fruits, vegetables, herbs, spices. Absolutely. They're all packed with antioxidants. Yes. That can help neutralize the damage caused by those pesky oxysterols. That's right. So basically a colorful plate equals a healthier me. Exactly. By incorporating these foods into your diet, you're giving your body the tools it needs to combat those pesky oxysterols. Okay, I love that. And speaking of fighting back, the Herbal Bloom article that we're exploring today actually mentions this specific herbal formula right. designed to address the negative effects of dietary cholesterol and oxysterols. Exactly. Oh, wow. So there's a potential herbal solution to this whole oxysterol issue. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about this formula. What's in it? How does it work? Well, the formula consists of both core and secondary ingredients, Okay. each playing a vital role in supporting overall health. Okay. Let's start with the core ingredients. Okay, core ingredients, lay it on me. What are we working with here? First up, we've got oat beta-glucans. Okay, we already talked about those. Yeah, which, as we've already discussed, are excellent for lowering cholesterol and modulating immune responses. So it's like a double whammy against those oxycystrol? Precisely. Next, we have turmeric. Ooh, turmeric. The golden spice that's been celebrated for centuries for its medicinal properties. I love turmeric lattes. Turmeric is a powerhouse of antioxidants, and anti-inflammatory agents, awesome. helping to neutralize oxidative stress and protect against cellular damage caused by oxysterols. So it's fighting on multiple fronts. It is. Cool. Now let's talk about resveratrol. Ah, resveratrol, a superstar in the antioxidant world. Okay. You'll find it in grapes, red wine. Red wine? Certain berries. Okay. Resveratrol has incredible anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects. Awesome. Making it a crucial player in modulating pathways affected by oxysterols. Okay. It's also a champion for cardiovascular and cognitive health. Sounds like a good reason to enjoy a glass of red wine with dinner. Absolutely. In well, moderation, of course. Of course. Next up, we have flaxseed oil, okay. a rich source of omega-3 fatty acids. Right. These healthy fats are known for their anti-inflammatory benefits mm -hmm. and are essential in counteracting the inflammatory effects of oxysterols, right. particularly in relation to cardiovascular health. Absolutely. Flaxseed oil is one of my go-to additions for smoothies and salads. Excellent choice. Mm. And finally, rounding out our core ingredients, we have green tea. Okay. 
packed with powerful antioxidants. Love green tea. Especially catechins like EGCG, okay. which provide incredible neuroprotective benefits. Nice. Green tea helps combat oxidative stress and inflammation, mm. reducing the risk of neurodegenerative diseases associated with oxysterols. So we've got oat beta glucans, turmeric resveratrol, flaxseed oil, and green tea all working together to fight those oxysterols and support overall health. That's an impressive lineup. It is. But wait, there's more. What? More. The formula also includes several secondary ingredients that work synergistically with the core ingredients to enhance the overall benefits. Right. Bring on the secondary ingredients. Tell me what they do. First up, we have ginger. Ginger. Renowned for its anti-inflammatory and digestive support properties. Oh, yeah. Ginger is great for the stomach. It is. Ginger helps to address overall inflammation and promotes digestive health. Okay. It's active compounds. Gingerols and shogiols provide additional antioxidant benefits. Awesome. Further bolstering the formula's effectiveness. Ginger is a kitchen staple for me. I love adding it to stir fries, soups, even desserts. Next, we have artichoke leaf. Artichoke leaf. Okay. Known for its lipid lowering and liver supporting properties. Interesting. Artichoke leaf helps to enhance litter function and reduce cholesterol synthesis. Okay. Which can help to decrease oxystrol formation in the first place. So it's like preventing them from even forming. Exactly. That's awesome. Artichoke leaf extract is a bit more specialized, but I've definitely seen it popping up in more and more health food stores. That's right. Right. Now for a fragrant favorite, rosemary. Rosemary. Provides antioxidant support with compounds like carnosic acid and rosmarinic acid. Okay. These powerful antioxidants help to combat oxidative stress and protect against cellular damage induced by oxystrols. Rosemary is one of my favorite herbs to use in cooking. It adds so much flavor, and now I know it's also doing wonders for my health. Absolutely. And finally, rounding out our secondary ingredients, we have more omega-3 fatty acids. More omega-3s. Yes. These healthy fats, whether from fish oil or flaxseed oil, right. further support cardiovascular and immune health, mm -hmm. aiding in the reduction of systemic inflammation, and promoting overall well-being. So it's a full-on assault against inflammation from all angles. I love it. Exactly. This herbal formula with its combination of core and secondary ingredients offers a comprehensive approach to addressing the challenges posed by dietary cholesterol and oxysterols. This has been an incredible deep dive so far. We've learned so much about oxysterols, how they form their potential dangers, and some powerful strategies for fighting back. But before we move on, I think it's important to address something crucial while we're exploring this herbal formula and its potential benefits, right. we want to emphasize that this information is not a substitute for medical advice. Absolutely. You should always consult with your healthcare provider before making any health decisions or starting any new supplements. We're here to share fascinating insights and spark your curiosity, not play doctor. Exactly. We want to be super clear about that. Yeah. But from a purely informational standpoint, I think it would be helpful to understand how this formula's unique blend of ingredients works together to create a more powerful effect. What is it about this specific combination that makes it stand out? That's a great question. Let's delve into the synergy of this formula and explore how these ingredients work together to create a greater impact than they would individually. What's fascinating here is that this formula isn't just about like individual ingredients doing their own thing. It's about creating this like symphony of actions where the combined effect is greater than the sum of its parts. Oh, I like that. You mean like a super group of nutrients, each with their own superpower coming together to fight those pesky oxysterols? Exactly. Like take ginger, for example. It's not just about its anti-inflammatory properties. Ginger can actually enhance the absorption and effectiveness of other ingredients in the formula. Wow. So it's like Ginger is the team captain, making sure everyone is playing their best. That's a great way to put it. And it's not just about the formula itself. The Herbal Bloom article really emphasizes this holistic approach to managing cholesterol and oxysterols. So it's not like a magic bullet. Just popping a pill won't solve everything. Precisely. It's about weaving these healthy habits into your daily life. What you eat and how you cook play a huge role. So I guess this means saying goodbye to my deep fryer. Well, you don't have to completely eliminate your favorite foods. Moderation is key. Yeah. But yeah, being mindful of your cooking methods can make a big difference. Opting for gentler techniques like steaming baking or stir frying at lower temperatures can significantly reduce oxystrol formation. Okay, got it. So a balanced diet, mindful cooking, and potentially this herbal formula. It sounds like a multi-pronged attack is the best way to tackle those oxystrols. But before we get too carried away with solutions, I'm still really curious about those autoimmune diseases you mentioned earlier. Can you tell me more about that connection? Of course. 
As we touched upon earlier, oxystrols have this fascinating ability to modulate your immune responses. And when those responses go haywire, it can lead to autoimmune conditions where your immune system mistakenly attacks your own body's tissues. So it's like your immune system gets confused and starts seeing friends as enemies. Precisely. It's like a miscommunication within your body's defense system. And oxystrol seem to be involved in that complex communication network. But how are they specifically linked to particular autoimmune diseases? Can you give me an example? Let's take multiple sclerosis or MS, for example. Yeah. Studies have shown that individuals with MS have different levels of various oxysterols compared to healthy individuals. So it's not just that they have oxysterols, it's that the levels are off. Exactly. And these altered levels seem to be playing a role in the disease process. There's evidence suggesting that decreased levels of 24-hydroxycholesterol and 25-hydroxycholesterol might actually be involved in the development of MS. That's fascinating. So in this case, these oxysterols, which we've been painting as villains, might actually be playing a protective role. It really highlights the complexity of oxysterols. It's not a simple good versus bad situation. Yeah. They have these multifaceted roles in our bodies, and understanding those nuances is crucial. Okay, so it's not as straightforward as we initially thought. Exactly. And this nuanced understanding paves the way for potential treatments. If we can figure out how to manipulate the levels of specific oxysterols, we might be able to modulate the immune response and help manage or even prevent these autoimmune conditions. So we could potentially harness the power of these oxysterols for good? That's incredible. It's definitely a promising area of research, and the more we understand about these complex interactions, the closer we get to developing targeted therapies for a wide range of diseases. This is mind-blowing. We yeah. started this deep dive talking about cholesterol and cooking methods, and now we're talking about the intricacies of the immune system and the potential for groundbreaking treatments. It just shows how everything is interconnected within our bodies. It truly does. And speaking of interconnectedness, we can't overlook the impact of oxysterols beyond the brain and the immune system. They also play a significant role in eye health, particularly in relation to retinal degeneration. Retinal degeneration, that's a serious condition that can lead to vision loss, right? That's right. And research suggests that oxysterols, particularly one called 7-ketocholesterol or 7-KC, can contribute to this process. Okay, so how do these oxysterols affect our eyes? Well, your retina, the light-sensitive tissue at the back of your eye, is incredibly susceptible to damage from oxidative stress. And 7-KC, being a potent inflammatory agent can exacerbate those issues. It's been found in elevated levels in the retinal pigment epithelium and drusen deposits, which are both associated with retinal degeneration. So these oxysterols are like tiny saboteurs wreaking havoc in our eyes. You could say that, but again, it's not a simple story. The formation and accumulation of 7KC in the retina is influenced by a variety of factors, genetics, diet, lifestyle choices. It's a combination of nature and nurture at play. Exactly. And understanding this interplay is essential for developing effective ways to prevent and treat retinal degeneration. So while we can't control our genes, we can make lifestyle choices that support eye health, like eating a diet rich in antioxidants and protecting our eyes from excessive sun exposure. Absolutely. Those are great examples. And there's emerging research exploring potential therapeutic interventions that specifically target oxysterols. Some studies are investigating compounds like stercolic acid and resveratrol to reduce the inflammatory effects of 7KC in retinal cells. It's encouraging to know that even though these oxysterols can be problematic, we're not completely powerless against them. We can take action through healthy habits and hopefully with future medical advancements as well. That's a great takeaway. Yeah. Knowledge is power. And the more we understand about oxysterols and their complex roles in our bodies, the better equipped we are to make informed decisions about our health. This deep dive has been a real eye-opener. We've gone from the basics of cholesterol and oxidation to the complexities of the immune system and the delicate balance of eye health. It's amazing how such tiny molecules can influence so many different facets of our well-being. It's remarkable, isn't it? It really highlights the interconnectedness of our bodies. What affects one system can have ripple effects throughout the entire system. It makes you wonder what other secrets these oxysterols might hold. And speaking of secrets, what about the role of oxysterols in regulating other biological processes? The Herbal Bloom article mentioned something about their interaction with nuclear receptors. Can you elaborate on that? Of course, nuclear receptors are like tiny sensors within our cells that detect specific molecules and trigger responses. Think of them as cellular messengers relaying instructions based on the signals they receive. Okay, I'm following so far. So how do oxysterols fit into this picture? Well, oxysterols can actually bind to several types of nuclear receptors, 
liver X receptors, estrogen receptors, retinoic acid receptor-related orphan receptors, and glucocorticoid receptors. Wow, that's a mouthful. But what does it mean in simpler terms? Why is it significant that oxystrols can bind to these receptors? It means they can influence a wide range of processes within your cells. Everything from lipid metabolism to inflammation to immune responses can be affected by these interactions. It's like oxysterols hold the keys to various control panels within your cells. So it's not just about the oxysterols themselves, but how they communicate with other parts of the cell. Precisely. It's a complex interplay of signals and responses. For instance, when oxysterols bind to liver X receptors, they can promote cholesterol efflux, which essentially helps remove excess cholesterol from your body. So in that case, they're actually doing something beneficial. Exactly. It's another example of how nuanced these molecules are. They can be both harmful and helpful depending on the context and the specific pathways they're influencing. This is incredible. It's like we're peeling back layers of complexity with each new discovery about these tiny molecules. And that's the beauty of scientific inquiry. The more we learn, the more we realize how much more there is to uncover. It leads to thought-provoking questions like, could controlling oxysterol levels be a key to healthier aging and disease prevention? That's a fantastic question. It's like we've come full circle. We began by discussing how oxysterols form from cholesterol, and now we're considering their potential role in shaping the trajectory of our health over time. It's an exciting area of research. There's growing evidence suggesting that oxysterols are involved in the aging process, and modulating their levels might hold the key to promoting longevity and preventing age-related diseases. So it's not just about avoiding those crispy fried foods, it's about understanding the intricate dance between cholesterol, oxysterols, and the aging process. You've got it. It's a multifaceted approach that involves lifestyle choices, dietary interventions, and potentially even targeted therapies in the future. This deep dive has been an incredible journey of discovery. I feel like we've just scratched the surface of this fascinating topic, but we've gained valuable insights that will definitely influence my choices moving forward. I agree. And hopefully our listeners feel empowered to continue exploring the world of oxystrols and make informed decisions that support their well-being. Absolutely. Remember, knowledge is power. And as we've discovered today, even the smallest molecules can have a profound impact on our lives. That's a great point. It's a reminder that there's always more to learn and that the world is full of fascinating connections waiting to be uncovered. Well said. Before we wrap up, I want to circle back to something you mentioned earlier about the potential for controlling oxysterol levels to promote healthier aging. Oh, yeah. That really piqued my interest. It is a captivating area of research. You know, while we've spent a lot of time talking about the negative impacts of certain oxysterols, there's actually this growing body of evidence suggesting that some oxysterols might actually play a beneficial role in aging and longevity. We really, so these molecules we've been talking about as like potential troublemakers mm -hmm. could actually have like a positive side when it comes to aging. It might sound counterintuitive, but... Okay. Yeah, some oxysterols appear to be involved in these cellular processes that can actually protect against age-related damage. For example, they might help regulate inflammation, protect against oxidative stress, and even influence the function of our mitochondria, which are like the powerhouses of our cells. Wow, that's amazing. It's like these oxysterols are playing this double game, both helping and hindering us as we age. So how do we make sure that we're tilting the scales in our favor? How can we harness the good, minimize the bad when it comes to oxysterols and aging? Well, that's the million dollar question that researchers are trying to answer. It's a complex interplay of factors. Lifestyle choices, diet, and potentially even targeted therapies are all being investigated. So it goes back to that holistic approach we were talking about earlier. Precisely. Eating a balanced diet rich in antioxidants, managing stress, getting enough sleep, engaging in regular physical activity, all of these things are crucial for healthy aging, and they likely influence oxystrol levels as well. Makes sense. What about those targeted therapies you mentioned earlier? Are there any promising developments on that front? Yeah, there are some exciting avenues being explored. Right. Scientists are investigating compounds that can selectively modulate specific oxystrols. Wow. The goal is to enhance the beneficial ones while suppressing the harmful ones. So it's like precision medicine for oxystrols. Exactly. It's just targeting the specific ones that are causing problems. It's a rapidly evolving field. Uh -huh. And while there's still a lot more research to be done, the potential for using oxystrol modulation as a strategy for healthier aging is incredibly promising. This has been such an incredible deep dive. I feel mm -hmm. like we've learned so much about these fascinating molecules, everything from their formation to their diverse roles in our bodies, mm. their impact on various diseases, and 
even their potential connection to aging. It really is remarkable how something so small can have such far-reaching effects on our health and well-being. It really is. And I think the key takeaway for me and hopefully for our listeners is that knowledge is power. You know, the more we understand about these complex processes, the better equipped we are to make informed decisions about our health. I couldn't agree more. By understanding how oxystrols work, we can take proactive steps to manage our cholesterol levels, make healthier dietary choices, and even explore potential therapeutic options down the road. Well said. It's been an absolute pleasure exploring this topic with you. Likewise. And to our listeners, I encourage you to continue this journey of discovery. Keep asking questions, keep learning, and keep diving deep into the fascinating world of science and health. It's been a delight joining you on this deep dive. And until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and take care of yourselves.